very good morning uh, my dear students welcome to my 7th class on the design of uh, column subjected to uniaxial load and uh, biaxial load in fact uh, if you see the outcome of the today's class after this class the students will be able to understand the behavior of the column subjected to biaxial bend moment and the design concept as per is 456 2000 provisions so in fact uh, yesterday we were discussing about uh, the analysis and design of uh, column subjected to uniaxial bending by using sp 16 in fact uh, we discussed uh, one typical uh, examples in connection with uh, uniaxial case let us see today two more examples uh, in case of uh, uniaxially loaded column and then we will be going to biaxially loaded column behavior so this is what the problem intended for uh, the today's class determine the limiting load carrying capacity of the column of size uh, 250 by 450 mm overall it is a rectangular column as you can make out consisting of uh, six bars of uh, 25 mm dia bars equally distributed on two phases it is a two phase arrangement as you can make out at an effective cover of uh, 50 mm cover is also given in the problem the eccentricity of the load for the steel is 200 mm so this is a very important point uh, students should uh, look into take m20 concrete that is fe that is uh, take m20 concrete and uh, fe 250 steel the second part of the problem is uh, what is the maximum eccentricity at which uh, the it can support a factor load of 500 kilo newton in fact the problem is uh, slightly different compared to the previous problem in the pre previous problem uh, so the load was given the moment was given the steel was given everything uh, connected with the problem was given and we need to check whether the column is uh, okay or not so that is uh, what the type of problem and sometimes we need to identify the amount of reinforcement and then we have to go for the proper arrangement of the steel and this is another typical problem where the eccentricity of the load is given and the type of the column and the reinforcement is given and we need to identify what is the maximum load that can be applied at this eccentricity of 200 mm in fact once you identify the load corresponding to this eccentricity of 200 mm we can also identify what is the moment associated with this 200 mm eccentricity and the corresponding load what will be determining from sp16 so let us see the first part of the problem so the given information i have written here size of the column is uh, 250 by 450 small b is 250 mm capital d is uh, 450 mm the grade of concrete is m20 in fact we have taken the grade as fe 250 even though fe 250 is not that popular in practice because many of the problems what we discussed uh, uh, were with uh, fe 415 and i just wanted to have one typical problem with fe 250 as well the eccentricity e is equal to 200 mm this is what is given in the problem now let us uh, calculate uh, one of the non dimensional uh, parameter that is required and before that uh, identify the effective cover to the depth ratio it is with respect to the major axis so we need to calculate the parameter with respect to the major axis as the bending axis 25 mm bar with uh, 25 mm dia bar with 25 mm nominal cover so the cover is slightly less here because the size of the column is uh, 250 mm as you can make out otherwise would have taken 40 mm as the cover so capital D is uh, 450 mm so d dash so we can calculate so 40 mm plus 12.5 that is 52.5 in fact we have taken the 40 mm itself as the cover in this case so this has been rounded off to 50 mm d dash by d is uh, 0.11 so as this 0.11 is very close to 0.1 so this has been rounded off to 0.1 itself instead of going for 0.15 so the chart corresponding to d dash by d equal to 0.1 has to be used so 100 ast by bd being the percentage of steel this is given in the problem so this is uh, the percentage so the percentage uh, works out to be 2.62 uh, uh, and from this we can calculate uh, p by fck so p by fck is equal to the percentage is 2.62 upon 20 it is 0 0.131 now in this uh, problem we do not have the load nor the moment but we can as well calculate the ratio of the moment to the load in fact the moment is equal to p into e now if you divide the non-dimensional parameter with respect to the moment 
with that of uh, the parameter with respect to P u. So, we get this uh, particular ratio and uh, the common uh, factors uh, gets cancelled out leaving uh, m u by P u. In fact, m u by P u is a function of eccentricity into 1 by d. So, m u by P u is nothing but eccentricity. So, eccentricity divided by d is uh, what they think that is left over. Now, the eccentricity is given in the present problem 200 mm. So, upon uh, the overall depth of the column is 450 mm. So, it is uh, 4 by 9. So, what we need to do is we have to draw the eccentricity line with this slope corresponding to 200 mm of eccentricity. So, here you can make out uh, this 4 is uh, corresponding to mu and 9 is corresponding to p u. So, that is the reason we need to draw a line through the origin at a slope of 9 by 4 with m u the moment uh, axis such that uh, it meets p by f c k is equal to 0 0.131 because the amount of reinforcement provided is such that the ratio of uh, percentage of steel to the grade of concrete is 0 0.131. So, you can take a point corresponding to 0 0.13 because we do not have 0 0.131 point, but approximately you can still pick up the point corresponding to this p by f c k of 0 0.131. So, that you can get the value of P u by F c k B d measuring uh, horizontally. So, this is what the value corresponding to the vertical axis and from this P u can be determined. You can also calculate uh, the another uh, non dimensional parameter with respect to M u and moment can also be determined, but however, in the problem the moment is not asked, but P u only is asked. So, that is why we can pick up P u by F c k B d that is equal to 0 0.48 and from that uh, P u can be calculated. So, P u is equal to 0 0.48 into F c k being 20 mega Pascal into 250 the width of the column and 450 the depth of the column. So, this is what the answer. So, that if you convert to kilo Newton it is 1080 kilo Newton approximately 108 tons or 1080 kilo Newton is what the load carrying capacity. But how to get this value of 0 0.48 from the graph is uh, what the question. So, we need to look for the appropriate uh, chart uh, in the SP 16. In fact, uh, I only <coughs> tell you the procedure, we look for that appropriate chart and get that value of uh, P u by F c k B d. So, we need to draw this eccentricity line, but in this uh, present problem the eccentricity is in the ratio of 4 is to 9, the 4 corresponds to the moment axis. So, you have to draw simply 4 centimeter and then draw 9 centimeter and then pick up a point corresponding to that point and if you join with the origin and you can draw a line. So, this is what the eccentricity line. So, do not go by the lines that are there in the graph because those lines are not uh, uh, corresponding to equal dimension. So, some of the lines if you can see here they form a small small rectangular uh, size. Uh, so, do not go by the values mentioned along the x axis or even the y axis but we need to draw a line corresponding to a slope of 4 is to 9 and we have to virtually draw a line corresponding to this slope. Simply draw 4 centimeter horizontally and then 5 9 centimeter vertically and pick up the point and join that point with the origin and get that eccentricity. And finally, so that eccentricity line will cut across uh, so many interaction lines corresponding to P by F c k. And, uh, pick up the point corresponding to our value of p by f c k and then draw a line horizontally and then vertically. So, that uh, we can pick up the two non dimensional parameters associated with p u and m u both p u and m u can be determined. So, this is what the procedure in fact, uh, what graph I have taken is a different graph, but you have to go to the appropriate graph. The idea was uh, just to tell you the procedure of identifying the eccentricity line and then the corresponding p u and m u with respect to p by f c k. So, instead of proceeding in a normal manner for the previous problem, you are going slightly in a different manner, but it is the same sp 16 and uh, the problem can be solved. Then what is the second part of the problem? Now, if you see the second part of the problem, so what is the maximum eccentricity at which it can support a factor load of 500 kilo Newton. So, you have to take the same eccentricity line and simply identify the non dimensional parameter associated with this 500 kilo Newton of uh, ultimate load. So, P u is 500 into 10 cube divided by F c k B d and uh, pick up the point corresponding to that uh, parameter, draw a line horizontally till you cut 
the same eccentricity line of uh, 200 mm and then go vertically down and pick the non-dimensional parameter associated with moment. So, with that uh, we will be able to pick up the, the corresponding load and the moment uh, with that eccentricity. So, second part of the problem is what is the maximum eccentricity at which it can support a factor load of 500. So, let us see this particular problem. So, the factor load of uh, <coughs> 500 uh, is given. In fact, I have taken it as 550. So, P u is 550 into 1000 upon 20, F c k is uh, 20, B is 250 and then uh, 450 is uh, capital D. So, you get 0 0.244. So, draw horizontal line for this point so that it meets the same P by F c k. So, that is 0 0.131. So, from that uh, we can pick M u divided by F c k B d square equal to 0 0.163 and from this uh, it is possible to calculate the value of mu. So, mu is equal to 0.136 and if you substitute the rest of the parameters we get this moment. So, ultimately for this moment the eccentricity can be identified. So, already P u is given. So, definitely P u by F c k B d is known and uh, the load is also known and uh, mu is also known. If you divide mu by P u, so you get E. So, this is uh, what 300.08 the eccentricity associated uh, with uh, the new load. Now, let us see one more problem in connection with uh, the design of a circular column subjected to uniaxial bending. The problem goes like this. Determine the reinforcement to be provided in a circular column with the following data. Diameter of the column is uh, 500 mm, grade of the concrete is uh, M20 characteristic strength is uh, 250 Newton per mm square is the mild steel bar, factored load is uh, 1600 kilo Newton, factored moment is equal to 125 kilo Newton meter. So, the type of the reinforcement uh, you can see here one is the hoop reinforcement, another is uh, the helical reinforcement. The hoop reinforcement will be in the form of ties, this is what is called as the laterals in the form of ties and in the second case it is the helical reinforcement. So, when you go for the helical reinforcement we have to decide whether that extra 5 percent load carrying capacity is to be taken or not and if you take that extra load carrying capacity then the load has to be reduced by 5 percent that is the only difference. So, otherwise there is no difference between the two problems A and B. So, the characteristic uh, strength is 250 Newton per mm square the given factor load is uh, 1600 kilo Newton factor moment is 125. So, with this uh, all the three parameters uh, required for referring to SP16 can be calculated. As usual, so we make this assumption the moments due to the minimum eccentricity is less than the actual moment and if the actual moments are less uh, then we need to design for the minimum eccentricity moments which are higher and they control the design than the actual moments. Now, as usual assume uh, 25 mm uh, dia bars with 40 mm uh, effective cover. So, that uh, d dash is uh, 52.5. So, d dash by d is equal to 52.5 upon uh, this is uh, 500. So, that is why it is uh, 0 0.105. So, I have written 50 here it should be 500. So, that uh, the charge corresponding to 0 0.1 can be referred. So, this 0 0.105 can be rounded off to the lower value. So, that is what the thing. The first problem column with uh, hoop reinforcement that is a circular tie P by F c k B d square B equal to D because it is circular it is D square. So, 1600 into 1000 upon 20 F c k 500 into 500 with this 0.32 the parameter in connection with ultimate load and similarly M u by F c k B d square again B equal to capital D. So, with this uh, if you substitute all the values then we get uh, 0 0.05. Then referring to the appropriate chart, the chart in this case is uh, chart number 52 for F y is equal to 250 Newton bar m m square and P by F c k is equal to 0 0.087. So, the percentage of steel from the graph that is chart 52 is uh, 0 0.087. So, 0 0.087 is nothing but P upon F c k. So, therefore, the percentage of steel P is equal to 0 0.087 the value what you get from SP16 into 20. 
So, it is 1.74 percent and this 1.74 percent is more than the minimum 0.8 percent and of course, less than 6 percent. So, it is ok. So, therefore, the area of steel AS if you calculate 1.74 into gross cross sectional area of the column pi d square by 4. So, divided by 100. So, this is equal to 3416 mm square. So, this is uh, what the total area. Now, we have to identify the suitable number of uh, bars and then you have to make the arrangement. Now, this is uh, what the graph uh, we need to look at the chart 52. So, the three parameters uh, I have mentioned here. So, the reinforcement is uh, 0 0.087. So, this is the upper portion of the graph. In fact, uh, d dash by d is 0.1, it is not 0.15, it is 0.1 and if you see the lower portion of the graph corresponding to 0.1. So, see here, so P u by F C K B D is 0 0.32 and similarly M u by F C K B D square is 0.5. So, corresponding to these two points, so we get a point somewhere here and that is in between 0 0.08 and 0 0.09 but it is very close to 0 0.08 and uh, that is why it is taken as 0 0.08. It is in fact in between 0 0.08 and 0 0.01, but slightly less than 0 0.09. So, that is what you can make out here. So, this has been uh, rounded off to something like 0 0.087 and with this uh, the steel has been calculated. Now, with this uh, percentage of steel, so let us uh, look for the arrangement. So, what is the type of arrangement uh, you can uh, uh, look for? So, the total area being 3416, uh, for this we can provide 6 bars of 28 dia, so that the area is uh, 3694. So, this area is uh, slightly more than uh, the required area, so that it is uh, ok. We can also look for the smaller dia bar if required, so that uh, 8 bars of 25 with an area of uh, 3826 greater than the required area of 3416. So, out of this I prefer uh, 6 bars of uh, 28 and if 28 is not available and if 25 is available in practice uh, or in the site. Uh, so, definitely we have to use the one that is available and with that uh, we will be providing slightly more area. And uh, design of transfer steel has to be done uh, as usual. So, then we have to write the sketch appropriately. So, this is uh, what the sketch going to be. So, the cross sectional uh, features of the column you can make out. So, 8 bars has been uh, kept symmetrically and this is how your longitudinal elevation of the column looks like. The transfer steel is ash 8 at uh, 300. Now, if you go for the helical reinforcement, what happens? According to IS uh, code, class 38.4, the strength of the compression member with helical reinforcement is 1.05 times the strength of the similar member with lateral ties. So, this has been explained with uh, suitable graph in the second class. So, this is what is called as ACI spiral and if the amount of spiral provided is more than that uh, given by the formula, then the load carrying capacity of the column uh, is uh, 5 percent more than that of the equivalent tied column. So, therefore, the given load in this problem has to be divided by 1.05, so that you can get the equivalent uh, non-dimensional parameter corresponding to a tight column. So, PU by FCK BD, so that is equal to 1600 the load and of course, into 10 to the power of 6 that is what you can see 1000 divided by 1.05. So, that is uh, what uh, the factor to reduce the load of 1600 whole upon uh, FCK into d d. So, it is a circular column that is why 500 into 500. So, it is 0 0.31. In fact, this 0 0.31 is slightly less uh, compared to the value what we got in the previous problem. And later m u by f c k b d square with b equal to d. So, you get the factor 0 0.048 substituting uh, everything appropriately and you can make out here even the moment has to be divided by 1.05. After all, moment is nothing but p into e. So, both the parameters are to be divided by 1.05. So, what parameters we got it previously? The parameters, so themselves can be divided by 1.05 or you can even calculate it separately. So, you have to refer to the chart uh, 52 corresponding to yield stress of uh, 250 
and uh, as usual so from the chart uh, we have to pick up uh, the ratio of the percentage of steel to that of the characteristic strength of concrete P by F C K and that is equal to 0 0.078. So, with this uh, the area of reinforcement uh, is 0 0.078 into we have to multiply that with uh, 20 the characteristic strength. So, it is 1.56 percentage the steel is uh, slightly less as you can make out here. So, the steel in terms of mm square multiplying that uh, with uh, the corresponding area. So, 1.56 into the area of the column. So, you get 3064. So, that is uh, what we need to get. Now, since uh, we have uh, divided the load and the moment by 1.05. So, we need to check uh, whether it is going to be a heavy spiral situation wherein uh, the condition given in the code is satisfied or not. If the condition is satisfied then uh, dividing the two parameters by 1.05 comes into picture and otherwise uh, so, the influence of the spiral is not there and so that the spiral column can be treated as it is uh, a tight column. So, this is uh, what the condition to be satisfied you can make out. So, where A g is the gross area of the section and A c is the area of the core measured to the outside diameter of the helix. So, in fact, uh, this type of problems we have discussed uh, in one of the previous classes in connection with design of helically reinforced column. And, uh, 8 mm dia spiral has been assumed here in the form of an helix. Therefore, the core diameter works out with 500 minus of 2 into the effective cover to the steel minus 8. So, with this uh, it is 436. So, this is actually a nominal cover. So, minus of 8. So, you can just uh, go through the figures that I have given in the previous class. So, with this we can work out as to what the core diameter. In fact, the core diameter by definition. So, it is uh, the distance measured to the outside diameter of the helix. So, that is 436 and you substitute all the parameters in this uh, equation. So, 0.36 Ag upon Ac minus of 1 into Fck by F5. So, this is uh, one parameter we need to calculate that is what uh, this side the right hand side. So, that works out to be 0 0.0091 after substituting uh, A g and A c. And uh, finally, from this equation, so we get uh, the spacing of the spiral. So, assuming 8 mm dia of the coil, so the spacing S v is 50.4 mm say 50 mm center to center. So, if you can provide the spacing equal to 50 mm or slightly less, uh, so it is possible to take the advantage of that 5 percent extra and let us assume that the in a spiral column the spacing is 50 mm. So, that what the problem you have solved is going to be correct. So, therefore, the amount of reinforcement. So, 6 bars of 25 with an area of uh, 2940 is uh, sufficient even though this area numerically is slightly less than 3063. But if you see the difference, uh, the difference is not that significant and definitely we can go with uh, 6 bars of 25 mm dia. Otherwise, we have to provide 7 bars of 25 mm dia so that uh, the area provided is slightly more than the required area. So, whether it is a 6 uh, bar arrangement or the 7 bar arrangement, so show the number of bars appropriately in the cross section. In fact, for the 7 number of bars, uh, we can make out here 4 plus 3, 7 number of bars I have put it. And in fact, it is uh, the arrangement and of course, uh, over the height of the column, the longitudinal sectional elevation of the column looks something like this. So, we need to satisfy this particular condition where the pitch determined should be more than 25 mm and it should be less than 75 mm. In fact, what we got like 50 mm in this particular problem. So, it is ok. So, it is satisfying the requirement. It is exactly 50 mm, the spacing of the spiral. And in fact, uh, this 50 mm is also more than 3 times the diameter of the spiral and it is less than 1 6 of the core diameter. So, all the conditions are satisfied and this is what the diagram going to be at the end of the design. Friends, so this completes uh, the analysis of the column subjected to uniaxial bending. In fact, uh, the second uh, topic is analysis and design of columns subjected to biaxial moment. So, today we will see little bit of theory in connection with uh, this biaxial uh, bending behavior 
and tomorrow I will discuss uh, one or two important problems uh, based on SP16 approach. So, in fact, uh, this biaxially loaded column is nothing but uh, the column subjected to axial load and also the moments with respect to both the axes uh, and we have three parameters coming into picture. One is P u, another is M u x and M u y. M u x and M u y are the moments uh, with respect to the two axis and P u is the axial load. Means, the load what you are applying onto the cross section is not concentric. The load has got the eccentricity not only with respect to the major axis, even with respect to the minor axis. Now, for the design, what we do normally? This particular problem can also be treated as if it is a equivalent uniaxially loaded column, but sometimes the reinforcement will be given in the problem, sometimes the reinforcement will not be given. So, we need to assume an appropriate percentage of the reinforcement. So, to do that type of calculation, we have to go by this. Now, for the design, we assume a trial suction. If trial suction is given, then it is okay. Otherwise, some trial suction has to be assumed depending on what is the type of suction uh, uh, suggested. It may be circular suction, square suction or even the rectangular suction and then we need to check the adequacy of the suction for the biaxial behavior. Now, what we do is, here the column section is subjected to an axial load of P u at eccentricities of E x is equal to M u y by P u and E y is equal to M u x by P u. So, we need to look for the appropriate eccentricity but if you see here, it is what the moment m u x with respect to the major axis, but eccentricity has to be measured along the y axis. That is why it is called as E y. You can also call it as E x, but you have to take the appropriate value. If I say E x, that is the eccentricity for m u x, but when you actually measure the eccentricity, the distance what you are measuring is along the y direction. So, that is why it is taken as E y, that is the only difference. And this is what the moment m u y with respect to the minor axis. The eccentricity of the minor axis is simply called as E x. And now, the trial steel can be assumed based on the following equation as if the column is subjected to uniaxial bending, which is referred to as the equivalent moment. The equivalent moment is uh, taken as 15 percent more than the square root of the sum of the squares of the two moments. So, m u x square plus m u y square. So, these two moments will be given in the problem. So, definitely this equivalent uh, moment as given by this formula can be taken. So, we have p u and also we have m u x as if the problem is uh, of a uniaxial case uh, identify p by f c k from the appropriate chart of S P 16 and the percentage of steel can be identified for that assumed trial section. Once the trial section is assumed, so we can check the adequacy of the trial section for the biaxial moment. But many a times uh, all the needed information will be given in the problem, then the problem is very simple, then also we need to check the adequacy, then use of this type of uh, equation does not come into picture. So, there are uh, uh, two important uh, approaches uh, specified in some of the good textbooks as far as this biaxial uh, bending is concerned. So, these things are uh, not required from the point of examination. In fact, if you see the syllabus, it is clearly mentioned that as far as biaxially loaded columns are concerned, it is only tackling problems using the charts of SP 16. But some of these methods as a part of theory, so I expect the students to know little bit of uh, some of the other methods uh, recommended for biaxially loaded column. So, this is what is called as reciprocal failure surface uh, approach. Based on the reciprocal failure surface to estimate the ultimate load carrying capacity of the biaxially loaded column, we have the following equation suggested by the Bresler and that is why it is referred to as the Bresler method. Now, for any problem, so these three things will be given. P u, this is 1 upon P u x y that is equal to 1 upon P u x plus 1 upon P u y minus 1 upon P u z. So, you have to see this, this is the minus and this is the plus. Now, what these uh, P effects are? P u x is nothing but the ultimate load for the biaxial bending. So, this ultimate load is not passing through the centroid, it is not along the major axis nor along the minor axis, it is applied 
through a point other than along the major and minor axis where the load is having eccentricity with respect to both the axis. So, this is the biaxial load. PUX is the ultimate load under the uniaxial bending case. When the same load is applied as if EY is equal to 0, what would have been the load the column is going to carry? So, that is PUX. And we have to calculate another component of the load which is PUY, the ultimate load under uniaxial bending, where bending is with respect to eccentricity EY, keeping EX is equal to 0. And then the same load has to be applied through the centroid, which is a concentric load. So, that is called PUZ, ultimate load axial capacity of the column when EX is equal to 0 and EY is equal to 0. So, once these two things are calculated and this third one can be calculated by using the formula or this can also be calculated from the chart from SP16. So, all these three things are there and ultimately you can identify as to what is this PUX, the ultimate load carrying capacity of the column when that load is applied with biaxial effect. Now, if you want to visualize uh, this thing in the form of a sketch, uh, so this is uh, what the cross section of the column is. I want to apply the load somewhere here, which is uh, P u x y, that is the load having eccentricity E x y, that eccentricity is in the radial direction with respect to the centroid and this has got two components, one is the eccentricity horizontally, another is the eccentricity vertically. So, when this particular load is applied at this point having an eccentricity in the direction of y where it is able to bend with respect to major axis. So, we can calculate that load. Similarly, when that load is applied somewhere here along the minor axis, but having an eccentricity with respect to this one, having an eccentricity with respect to the minor axis along the major axis. So, this is the point. So, obviously, we have a situation like this wherein the load is applied at this point with eccentricity E x, so that we have the moment with respect to major axis and similarly applying the load at this point having an eccentricity with respect to this minor axis, so that it bends with respect to minor axis. And then finally, we have to apply the same load through the center. So, identify this load and then this load and finally, this load and finally, substituting all these things in this particular equation, so we can calculate the remaining thing. So, knowing any three, so the rest of the another one, the remaining uh, fourth one can be calculated. So, this is what the Bresler method is. We also have one more method called as the equivalent uniaxial uh, bending, mo mo bending moment uh, method. So, here the column section is subjected to PU, of course, we have the two moments MUX and MUY. So, the column is designed for a uniaxial bending P u and an equivalent moment M u x dash or P u and M u y dash. So, we need to calculate either M u x dash or M u y dash depending on the situation. That is why we have two equations. So, the both the equations we can see here. In the first case, for M u x divided by d, this is what the condition we need to check M u x upon d, if it is more than m u y divided by b dash, the design load p u and m u x dash is what the equivalent uniaxial moment, where m u x dash is given by this. So, m u y is there and of course, this is a parameter to be multiplied for m u y alpha into d divided by b dash. Now, the another check to be made is this one m u x by d if it is less than or equal to. So, for equal case any of these two formula can be used. So, m u y divided by b dash, therefore, the design load is p u and the equivalent moment m u dash is given by this particular equation. So, where capital D small b and this b dash, so these are the things you should know. So, d is nothing but the effective width with respect to the major axis, there is no problem as far as this is concerned. So, capital D is known, small d can be calculated and this b dash is the only thing we have to calculate that is the effective width uh, with respect to the minor axis. So, the minor axis depth is b and uh, leaving the cover, so if the minor axis depth b is something like 300, 300 minus of the effective cover. So, normally effective cover is around 50 mm. So, 300 minus of 50 mm depending on the cross section. So, we can calculate this b dash. So, where the alpha which is the constant is given by this particular equation. 
So, th this is one particular approach being discussed uh, in some of the good textbooks. I re request the students to go through some of the good textbooks on RCSA so that uh, the students can appreciate some of these uh, methods applied to biaxially loaded column. So, this is what the column subjected to biaxial effect. So, if you have the column here subjected to PU and at the top you have uh, MUX along the X direction and of course, MUY along the Y direction. The moments are represented by double headed arrow, the load is with single headed arrow and the moments are there not only at the top of the column. So, you can think of the moments even at the bottom of the column. So, this is what the type of column is going to be in case of uh, multi story building and in multi story building as you can make out. So, column is not only subjected to column effect, it is also subjected to moment effect. So, the column is behaving partly as an axially loaded column and partly as a flexural element and that is the reason why such columns in multi story building is referred to as beam columns. So, all columns in framed structure are referred to as beam columns. Now, this is uh, what the interaction diagram uh, uh, going to be for the biaxially loaded case. So, we can see the Bresler load contour, this is what is uh, being referred to as and this is uh, what the method uh, covered in IS 456-2000 which I will be discussing after this and we can make out the axis. One is uh, the x axis horizontally, another is the y axis horizontally and vertically we have the y axis. This is what the origin O is. The vertical axis is also called as the load axis. So, you can see this P u the ultimate load and uh, this is uh, O x. In other words, so this P u axis and this uh, O x axis is nothing but the uniaxial plane and this is what the interaction diagram uh, which I discussed in uh, one of the previous classes and this is what the type of graphs you can see even in your SP 16. So, this is what the interaction diagram corresponding to P u and M u x and similarly, if you have a plane with respect to load and another moment. So, this is what the plane you can see. So, with respect to this plane also we can think of a interaction diagram and this is what the interaction diagram for P u and the corresponding M u y. So, if you can see the locus of this uh, interaction diagram covering these two horizontal axes. So, you get this particular bulb a three dimensional type of uh, envelope you will be able to get. So, this is what the three dimensional interaction equation that is required for uh, analyzing uh, the biaxially loaded uh, problem. Now, in this particular problem, so if you do not have the moment uh, either in the x direction or in the y direction, then we can simply increase the axial load on the column. So, that is why your P u keep on increases at one stage when P u reaches the maximum value say P u limit corresponding to the point A. So, we have this load P A. So, that is what the limiting capacity of the column. In case the column is not subjected to any axial load and at the same time there is no moment with respect to the y, what might be the absolute maximum moment that can be applied for the column bending about the major axis. So, that is what the maximum point you can get it here. So, this is what the point corresponding to maximum m u x and similarly, so this is what the point corresponding to maximum m u y when m u x and p u are not there and that is the reason why these are the three extreme points. This is point with respect to maximum p a, point with respect to maximum m u x, point with respect to maximum m u y. So, definitely with respect to p a and this m u x. So, this is what the uniaxial interaction diagram and similarly, this is another interaction diagram for p u and uh, m u y and if you take the locus of these two diagrams with respect to y and x axis, we are going to get this three dimensional interaction equation. Now, if you take one point say the point A corresponding to that point A measuring from the origin O A is what the axial load you can apply on the column where the load is less than absolute maximum value that is P A. Now, since uh, the load corresponding to A is less than the limit P A, so definitely there is some reserve capacity in the column so that you can apply the moment. You can either apply complete moment equal to M A X with respect to X axis so that there is no moment with respect to Y or you can even apply a moment maximum equal to M A Y 
so that there is no moment in this direction. By chance if you apply moment with respect to this particular plane O y and O x, so that you can get a point somewhere here means we have a moment of M a corresponding to the point a. This moment is not with respect to either this plane nor with respect to this plane. This is with respect to an ordinary some arbitrary plane and with respect to the arbitrary plane this is what the interaction diagram is. So, similar to this interaction diagram, so this is what the diagram is. So, kindly see how the cursor is moving. So, this is what the interaction diagram going to be for this intermediate plane. It means corresponding to the point A, so we have the axial load O A and we have the moment A to this particular point called as M A. Since this moment M A is acting on the arbitrary plane, so this moment can be resolved with respect to the two orthogonal axis. One is this, uh, this axis, the major axis and another is with respect to this minor axis. So, the two components of the moment M A are, so this is what you can see in the color, so you can make out as to what that moment is. So, I have shown that uh, component, then we have to measure these two values and definitely the component of M A x with respect to M A is definitely less than M A. Similarly, the component with respect to y will be less than this M A because I need to calculate one component only over this length, one component, another component is over this one and that is what uh, the total moment M A is. So, this is how we need to uh, calculate uh, the various uh, parameters associated with this uh, biaxial uh, envelope and uh, what you can see here as a hatched part. So, this entire thing is called as plane of constant load. So, the constant load is from uh, O to A, but if you take the load almost equal to P A, so then there is no plane, it is going to be a point. As the load carrying capacity is decreased lower further down P A, then we are going to get this plane of constant P U. So, that plane will be smaller at the top and as you go towards the origin, the plane becomes bigger and bigger and at one stage, so this point A can be taken corresponding to the point uh, O itself. So, it means uh, corresponding to O, you cannot apply any axial load on the column, but you can apply two moments, one is M u x and M u y with respect to these two axes or some combination of M u y and M u x such that you can define that particular envelope alone corresponding to this horizontal plane. Now, for the given load of O A, when your ultimate load is at this particular point, uh, so you can define the load contour, means uh, corresponding to that particular load, what combinations of M A X and M A Y you can apply, that is along this particular contour. So, this is what the contour that will give you the different combinations of M A X and M A Y corresponding to the load O A and that is why this is the load contour and this is what the plane of the constant load P u. And for uh, checking the adequacy, if your point is along this contour or well within this contour, means it is on the con on this plane or along this contour, then it is safe. If it is outside the contour or outside the envelope, then it is the failure. That is how you need to check the adequacy as far as uh, the biaxial loaded column is concerned. Now, what is the particular method suggested by IS456-2000? All this uh, information you can uh, get it from uh, IS456 and also you have these informations available in uh, SP16. So, that uh, if there is any problem uh, on this uh, in the examination, in fact it is uh, very simple because all the needed informations are available documented very well in SP16 so that you can tackle the problem. Now, what is the interaction uh, equation as far as this uh, load contour method is concerned? So, that is uh, given by this equation. So, such members may be designed by the following equation. What is the first part of the equation? M u x upon M u x 1 whole rise to the power of alpha n plus M u y upon M u y dash whole rise to the power of same alpha n and that should be less than or equal to 1. So, here M u x is what the uniaxial moment with respect to the major axis given in the problem and M u y is uh, what the moment with respect to the minor axis is what I have written here M u x and M u y 
moments about x and y axis due to design loads. But what we need to calculate is mu x dash and mu y dash from SP16 and these two moments are referred to as maximum uniaxial moment capacity for the axial load PU bending about x and y axis respectively. Means that what would have been the maximum value of mu x you can apply that is what mu x 1 provided mu y is not there. So, by chance when the same load is applied in such a way that where mu y is not there, but you have only mu x means we need to calculate the uniaxial bending capacity mu x 1 when mu y is not there and uniaxial bending capacity mu y 1 when mu x is not there means uh, to get this mu x 1 and mu y 1 we need to look for the interaction diagrams from sp16 for the uniaxial case so depending on the type of the problem so once these two things are calculated finally we need to calculate alpha n and this alpha n is a function of the axial load applied onto the column which produces the biaxial bending and that also depends on what might be the absolute maximum value of the axial load when it is applied concentrically. So, that is nothing but P u z. So, this P u z is given by this particular formula. So, P u z is nothing but 0.45 f c k a c 0.75 f y a a c. So, this 0.75 is uh, the average value, but if you see this particular formula the load carrying capacity has not been reduced by 10 percent. If you reduce the value of 0.45 and 0.75 approximately by about 10 to 11 percent. So, we get the column formula for the practical case. So, that is the minimum eccentricity problem, but here so this is what the absolute maximum load carrying capacity when the eccentricity minimum eccentricities are not considered and that is the reason why this P u z is more than P u. Now, how to calculate uh, the value of alpha n because we know P u and also we know P u z, P u is the given load and P u z is uh, what the limiting load calculated by the formula. P u by P u z for most of the practical problems varies from 0.2 to 0.8. If P u by P u z is 0.0 then the value of alpha 1 can be taken as 1. If P u by P u z equal to 0.8 then this value can be taken as 2. So, in between it varies linearly from 1 to 2. So, for values less than 0 0.2 you can take it as 1 and if the value is greater than 0 0.8 then it is taken as 2. So, this alpha n can also be calculated by using this simple equation. The equation for alpha n you can make out here and it is uh, a function of P u by P u z. So, this is how the value of uh, alpha n varies along the y axis depending on what is the value of P u by P u z. P u by P u z less than 0.0 it is 1, if it is more than 0.8 it is 2 and in between 0.2 and 0.8. So, this alpha n can be calculated which is between 1 and 2. So, once this alpha n is calculated and of course, uh, m u x 1 and m u y 1 and this uh, interaction equation can be uh, satisfied and for any given problem if this value works out to be less than or equal to 1 then it is safe. If it is very close to 1 it is safe and economical and by chance if it is greater than 1 then it is unsafe then we have to revise the problem. The revision means you have to either increase the size of the column or you have to increase the grade of the concrete or the grade of the steel and for the given set of parameters we need to increase the area of the steel and again work out as to what this m u x dash and m u y dash and again check to see that this interaction equation gives a value very close to 1, but less than 1. If it is significantly less than 1, your column is very safe, but it is highly uneconomical. So, this is what the type of the problem we will be discussing in the next class. I request the students to just have a glance through all these things in uh, IS 456 and SP16, so that tomorrow we will be discussing one or two important problems. So, thank you very much students. So, if you have any questions, so you can ask.